Hang on, baby. <laughs> hey, y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley, I mean, golly, Real Southern Woman. Chris is watching The Walking Dead. So, I'm not watching it, and I decided I'd come in here and talk to y'all instead. I did my Bible study early this morning, and um, I think I've still got, let me see if I've still got my uh, marker marked from what I had marked this morning. It should be, because I was just out on the porch. I went out there on the porch to do Bible study, and my internet's not picking up out there. And I want to know, can y'all hear me that far away? I know I've got a big mouth, so you probably can. But I can't see your comments or anything when it's that far away from me. If y'all don't care, I'm going to put it on selfie mode. Sorry, my hand's in the way, but you know, hey. You know, hey, let me fix it. I'm in my bedroom. Most of y'all have seen it. And y'all are not going to believe something crazy happened today. Um... Let me take this over here with me and set it up right here. <clears throat> um, today, wait a second. I've had to set this up three times. Today, we got up and we started about in the house and I had washed a load of clothes and Amy was getting in the tub, got in the shower and I heard a gurgling. Well, I'd heard it one other time when I was in the shower through my toilet. Well, I heard a gurgle, gurgle in the kitchen, and then I went in there in the bathroom where she was, and some bubbles were coming up from the toilet, and then I came in here, and there was sewage coming up in my shower, and I blamed it on the dogs. I was about to put them in their crate, and I said, Hold on one second, let me turn my chair around so that I can not look sideways at y'all. Or I'll just move the table, that might be better. I'm just moving y'all around everywhere. Y'all, this is the first time I've done Bible study in my room, so it's taking a minute to get set up. Sorry, and y'all know me, I ain't never done anything oh, the correct way. Now, Anyway, so there was sewage. So I told Chris I was going to call the sewer people. And they came out. And there was about four trucks. I have to say I love this place already. The first time we had cable put in, I bet there was four cable trucks out here. And today, there's probably four or five trucks out here again. Um, it's a small enough community that uh, when you ask for help, buddy, they're here. And I like that. But anyway, we couldn't find the clean out to the house. We're on sewer. Um, and we looked and looked. So I told Chris, I said, we have a crawl space. Go under the house. Now, he's never had to do this. I said, go under the house and look for white pipe that's about yay big and see where it comes out at so we can try to figure out where the clean out is. So he had already been working uh, he went fishing this morning. So as soon as he got home, I had this problem going on. He had to get up under the house. Um, he figured out where it was coming out. It was coming out in the back where the deck was. So um, the deck was built on top of the clean out. Okay? It was crazy. So... I tried to call the girl who used to live here. I couldn't find her phone number. So I did something kind of neat. I went online, I, I got her email, and on my email, it's Gmail, it said I could make a video call. So I video called her, and it was kind of cool to see her and her little girl. And I told them what was going on, and she told me the clean out was, in fact, under the deck, and that you had to take the two planks off next to the house. Well, when Chris got out there, he don't have an electric drill here. And the screws were those star-looking ones. They look like stars. Not torque, but stars. 
And we had one that fit it, that's a hand screwdriver, but he was working himself to death with it. So they went to lunch and Chris went, at, our appointment was at one at the doctor. And so uh, we went and got a corded drill, came back, he got the deck boards off, um, got to the clean out, and while I was gone, and um, they said that it was stopped up from here to the road, that there was all kind of stuff in it, and then they learned, because they put a camera up in it, that we had another clean out in the yard that apparently had just been cut off and dirt and debris was going into it. Um, so they dug that up. Well, Chris spent the rest of his afternoon trying to put a cap on that PVC pipe in the backyard because they fixed the other one, but their job's not to fix the one in the yard. Chris is not a plumber. And he went to Lowe's two different times. I finally said, he called me. He said, Tammy, I can't fix that. We're going to have to call a plumber. I said, well, that's in the area that we may eventually, if this economy does recoup, you know, redo our garage. I said, I don't want to put a lot of money in it. I don't want to call a plumber and spend two or $300. Get one of those zip ties. And he was like, a zip tie? And I said, you know, what you zip tie the, with a screw that you use for the dryer vent to keep it tight. And he said, okay. I said, we'll put a piece of plastic over the top of it, zip tie it to the pipe, and cover it up. It ain't gonna hurt nothing as long as it's good and closed. And so that's what we did. Rigged it, y'all. Rigged it up. But now the main clean out, of course, was done by the sewer company. But they did say it had a lot of stuff in it. Well, I have noticed that things wouldn't drain in all that good. Uh, but I wasn't, what's so funny is when I called them, I came in here with the dogs to put them in their crate so that they'd be put up when the guys were here. And when I walked through the door and I went to put them in their crate, I said, oh my gosh, who put it? I said, let's go, y'all need to go do your job. I thought one of them had pooted and that they needed to go potty before I put them to bed. <laughs> so when I came back in the house, it dawned on me, when they were out there going to the bathroom, I thought, you know what? If that water was bubbling up in the toilet, it was just clear, it was just bubbles. It didn't have anything in it. In Amy's bathroom, it's possible that sewage was coming up, and that was the smell I smelled. So when I came back in and put them to bed, I was like, oh my goodness, I just accused my dogs of pooping and they didn't do it. So I came in here. And yes, there were sewage in the doggone shower. But thank God it did not overflow or nothing crazy or I would have not been happy at all. But I got to talk to my previous owner and see her and her little girl and they were doing homeschool. And um, through that video chat, um, Brenda says they've worked on their septic. Y'all, I don't even have a septic tank. It's on sewer, so you wouldn't think it'd be a problem, but it was today. But let me just say, we're all cleaned out. Oh, oh, oh. So now when I get in the shower and I clean the shower and I'm in there for a long time, um, it'll be draining good. And it'll be draining good everywhere. So I'm glad about that. Um, I'm glad that these people are still working. Uh, down here, I have to say, and I know I should say this, but nobody's been uh, diagnosed with the COVID-19 yet. And so business as usual everywhere here. I don't think their kids are in school, but all the businesses are open. Now they don't have indoor dining in, well they do in some places, down here still. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but now we haven't been dining out or nothing. But I will say I made the grossest supper ever tonight. Ugh. Being up here, I mean down here where I don't have my groceries, it was a little bit disheartening today. I thought I was going to make nachos. Well, I had some ground beef that I'd found in the freezer from the time me and Chris had come before. So I was going to brown that and we were going to have nachos. 
Well, I didn't buy sour cream and I didn't buy queso, but I did buy Mexican shredded cheese. So I took the Mexican shredded cheese and added it to some milk and made a cheese sauce. Then I uh, browned my ground beef and we had refried beans we bought in a can. I'm telling you, y'all, I don't even have a can opener down here. So I had to take a knife and the knife that I got down here May bought at the dollar store for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And it's a little paring knife and it's it actually works pretty good for a dollar, but it has a pointed end. So when I wanted to go poke it in my can and beat on top of it, open my can, I had a pointed end and it was hurt me. I had to take a cloth, put it on top of the knife, stick it in there, pry it, you know, and try to, like I wouldn't just stick it in there and pull it out. I, I, I pushed it so that it would open the can at least, you know, that much. And Amy was just looking at me like, I can't believe she's opening this can with this knife. And I opened it halfway and then I bent the top up and then I scooped out the uh, beans and I thought, you know what, there could be a sliver of aluminum in there and we'd be eating it, but I don't even care. That was the only way I could get into the can. So I told Chris when he was on his way home from Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, they have a Lowe's here. I didn't even have a can opener. He went, Tammy, I don't want to stop anywhere. I said, I don't want you to stop either. I opened it with a, a knife. And if I, and see, tomorrow I've got pork chops that I got to cook. I've got some asparagus. We still had red potatoes down here from me, when me and Chris come down here three weeks ago. And they still look fine. So I'll probably cook those because nobody can even find the potatoes right now. And, um, but I was going to make some green beans and stuff, but I can't even open the cans down here. Isn't that crazy? Needless to say, I don't know where my... I cannot believe that that is not showing up for me. I'm going to look it up in the back because I want y'all to hear. When I got up this morning, I'm just going to be honest with you. One reason I haven't been on is because... This is so emotional, this whole thing. And like, I don't want to pretend like it's not happening uh, to y'all, but then I don't want to, um, because I don't want y'all to think I don't care, because I do care. But then I don't want to talk too much about it because it's depressing and I want to be able to be uplifting. <laughs> it's just... Like, every time I think about coming on today, because I was actually going to do it early when the birds were singing. Y'all let me know who's up early, because I got up early this morning. The birds out there on that back porch, they're so loud, and you can hear them, and they don't know anything's going on, you know? And it's just, when I got up this morning, and I went out there to read my Bible, I thought, you know, these birds are happy, and they're singing, and it's just a beautiful day to them, you know, because they don't know that there's a virus, and it was just a pleasant place to be on my back porch this morning. Um, but my doggone internet won't pick up down out there for y'all for some reason. I'm gonna have to get an extender. And then I just put it off, and I put it off, and I put it off, and then when he turned on the Walking Dead, I thought, I'm going in my room talking to my, my friends. All right, let me flip over to blood. I'll touch on something real quick for y'all. Exodus 12, 13. That was it. So, um, you know, I've been reading in John. And it takes me a while, y'all, to read. Because I don't just read the Bible and just keep reading. I think I got to, you know figure out who he was writing to and why he was writing it and who did this and who did that. And I read all the stuff at the bottom in my study Bible. And then I look up all the scriptures about what I'm reading so I could read a chapter. And it take me two days to get through everything. So it takes me a while to move through stuff. So today I was in that mood going out there, heard the birds singing, and I thought, you know what, God? And I don't really... No, no, if 
sometimes, you know, you think you know how God might, you know, work through. through. I do know he talks to us through scripture. But I'm not one that believes that you should just close your eyes and say, God, show me a scripture and point, and there it is. But I will say, when I opened the Word of God this morning, um, I love this Bible. It's a study Bible, and it's an ESV, and it's a hardback, which I love. It's got big print. It's got pictures. I just love it. But anyway, um, so I flipped over as I was opening it up, and I opened it up to this verse, and I just happened to look down at, in Exodus when I opened my Bible. I don't even know why I did it, because I don't normally do that, and it said, this is exactly what it says at the top of the page, and you can see right here, now it's going to be uh, backwards because I'm on selfie mode. But it says, Exodus 12, 13, I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And I thought, you know what? He's trying to show me that he's the Lord. I mean, look at this, y'all. I opened this up today, and I didn't have any rhyme or reason to open it up. I was just going to open my Bible and go to John, and this is what I see. I am the Lord. And he even says the word blood, pass over, and plague in this, in this passage of Scripture that I read this morning. It's, it's just unbelievable to me. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, do I think he's telling us that he's going to keep us all from getting sick? No. Matter of fact, when I sat down... What I was thinking, more than anything, was God can heal us, but he heals us through the blood of Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. And that's what I was thinking when I sat down, you know, that the main thing is that he's healed us through his son. Then I open it up and I read this passage. Um, so, I... Decided then that I was going to look. I know exactly what he means by it. You know, I mean, I can read, um, you know, the common, the description in the bottom and stuff. But I knew what God was trying to show me. And you know what stuck out to me that was more than important than anything? The people who had the blood. Uh, let me just say this, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about. What had happened was ex in, in Exodus before um, when God had sent the plagues in to, to try to make believers out of the uh, Pharaoh, one of them was to kill the firstborn child. So what he did is he told the people of Israel, if they would take blood and put it over the, the head post of the front door and the sides, then when the death angel passed through, that that death angel would not go into their home and kill their firstborn. Now, I just got cold chills. Um, it was his blood, the blood that had the death angel pass over. It's also that blood, that was the blood of a sacrifice they had made. It's also the blood of Christ that keeps us from ever dying. And so regardless if we get this um, virus or not, if we believe in Jesus Christ and we've been saved by the blood of Jesus, which means we believe that he did die for us and he was the ultimate sacrifice, then we never die. 
So then I decided that I would look up where blood was referenced in the scripture. And then I came here to Isaiah. And Isaiah is a prophet, okay? And Isaiah is talking about... Um, The, this is Isaiah talking about the people of Israel. And this is God speaking through Isaiah to the people. And it says, um, let me make sure I go to the right one. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. This is at Sodom and Gomorrah. Give ear to the teaching of our God you people of Gomorrah, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices? Oh, let me say this before I read this, and y'all think about this. My brothers, um, preach, he preached Sunday on how God has stripped us from things in our life that took our attention away from him. He stripped the guys and the girls that are sports people. Uh, there's no sports. Um, he's taken the kids out of school. He's put the family together in the home. He's taken us out of restaurants. Um, the only thing he hasn't done is taken away our digital devices, you know. But I'm glad he's left those because that's how we spread his word. And that's how our preachers have been able to preach the word to us right now. But my brother's message, and I don't know if you watched it or not, but you have to click on it. I did share it to the page. Um, was all about that and how um, he said, are you really, really spending time with the Lord? Even now? Like, so many of us will say, and I'm guilty too, that we're going to pray for people and then we never do. So many people will say, I mean, like, they'll say that, um, you know, they're concerned but then they never pick up the book. Many people will pick up a devotional and read a little excerpt that somebody wrote, but they won't pick up the Word of God and read it. And God speaks to us through His Word, not through other people's little excerpts. In other words, when I come to you and I do a Bible study, it is from the Word of God that I'm speaking and that I'm reading from. If I don't have the Word of God in there, or if you do a Bible study and you don't take the time out to read the Word of God, then you're really not doing much of anything. Even if it's encouraging to you, me telling you you're beautiful and your eyeshadow shadow looks good today is encouraging to you as well. Uh, so is it really spiritual is what I'm saying. So you got to put yourself in the mindset of being spiritual. And you can't be spiritual unless you put yourself out of the way and get into the book. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is what's powerful. The word of the Lord is what makes people turn off their TVs, turn off their devices, decide they're going to listen to something else. Um, even when my brother was preaching, once he started preaching the word and reading what was coming out of the Bible, so many people drop off. Okay, so remember that. Now, my thing here is, are you really spending time with God right now? Are you saying you're praying, but just barely praying? Are you, I mean, I'm just as guilty as y'all are. I haven't really dropped down on my knees yet. I don't know if you have, and I praise the Lord if you have. And I maybe, you know, maybe tonight I'll do that before I go to bed. You know, my papa knelt at the bottom of his bed every night to do his prayers. And I know he did it so he wouldn't fall asleep and so he could pray longer. And it was like his altar. And now that I have this bed in here, y'all, this is the perfect bed to kneel at. Because it's got a footboard that's low. So I could actually get on my knees, put my uh, elbows on there, and and bow my head and have prayer with the Lord. And maybe that is something I will start doing tonight, okay? 
Um, and I'm not trying to be big or I'm not trying to be special and I'm not trying to act like I'm spiritual because I'm not. But I just was amazed at the scripture that I read today when he talked about the blood, he talked about the plagues, he said he's the Lord. And then I flip over to this with all of this in mind, like I had it in my mind this morning knowing that I needed to spend more time with him, knowing that he has stripped us away of so many things, listen to what he was saying to them. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or of goats, when you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me, and I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil out of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil and learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, what made me, what come to my mind is he's taken church away from us. And he was, he was talking to these Pharisees. And these Sadducees and these, um, you know, workers of the law. And he was letting them know that, that they didn't mean anything to him. And that he had had enough of their sacrifices. And he had had enough of their, of their uh, new moons and feasts like we do in the Baptist church. We have feasts. Um, he let them know that all of that was really nothing to him. Um, and you know what? It's really not a whole lot to him if you don't have the faith that you need um, and without, you, you're not going to have the faith that you need without his word. And you're not going to, you might think you're faithful and you might think that you have faith, but if you don't pick up the Bible and feed your body with his food, then you're fooling yourself. Um, one thing that I was reading the other day, and I never brought it to y'all, and I should have, was how God, well, how Jesus, I did tell y'all about how, um, when he was at the, with the woman at the well, and the guys came up, and they said, aren't you hungry? And he said, he said that, um, that he was full, because he had been doing the will of the Father. Um, but then I got to thinking about Jesus being the Word of God and the Word because, you know, it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God. So Jesus Christ is the Word of God. This is all about Jesus Christ, nothing more. So, I mean, that's the main, the main thing about it. So if you don't feed with Jesus' food, this is Jesus' food, his body. He sacrificed for us this blood that can save us forever and give us eternal life. Those things m matter so much more to God than the things we do. 
how good we are. Um, not only that, but I mean, I was reading the other day about um, another thing is that that Jesus died for our sin, all sin, y'all, all of it. So quit worrying. And I think this was in another verse that I read about blood. Um, and I can't remember where it was. I didn't write it down. Um, but it was talking about how Jesus. Um, let me let me think about what I was about to say. And make sure I say it right. <sighs> now I've lost my train of thought. I was talking about food. I was talking about Jesus. I was talking about blood. Y'all, you would think I was on drugs or something. Um, if it comes back to me, I'll tell you what it was. Oh, have mercy. Um, I wish I could remember that. Don't that just bother you when you do stuff like that? I know I'm not the only one. I know y'all all do it too. Anybody that's under stress does it. Anybody that's in menopause does it. And anybody that's been through chemo does it. There's so many reasons for it. But anyway, um, the main thing is that when Jesus spoke to me this morning through the Word of God, He told me that the blood is all that matters. It should be all that matters to, to all of us. That God has given us what's most important. I know it's depressing. I know it doesn't make it go away. I know that it's hard. Um, it's hard for me to talk about it and not want to get y'all. But you know what? We have hope. And a lot of people are like, well, you can say that all you want, but nobody wants to die. You know what? If, if you're worried about dying, get in the Word of God and make sure you're saved. Read the book of John because it's the the. John is so huge about salvation. It points to Jesus. Um, and, of course, Romans has the Romans road. But I still think John, it is one of the Gospels. It, and it is uh, the best place to point people to. Um, but I really wish I could think about. I got on that, I got on that study thing about Jesus's. Jesus and his food and how he was satisfied with the food um, that the, the that God had given him through the salvation that was going to be um, gained through the woman at the well and her testimony. And, oh, I know where I needed to go with that now. See, I knew if I talk about it for a second. Um, there's the judgment. And... So many people worry about the judgment. Um, and they worry about what good they're doing and what bad they're doing. And what can they do to make them, you know, have a better judgment. Can I say that when Jesus died for our sin, he died, he died for all sin. He died for the sin of the world. So, when you're a Christian, you are not judged ever again for your sin because Jesus covered that with his blood when when Jesus when uh, God looks down on us because we're never good enough the only thing that makes us good enough in the eyes of God is the fact that he can see the blood of Jesus Christ in us or on us or that hides our sin the judgment for the Christian is what have you done for God? What have you done for God? Have you spread the gospel? Have you told your neighbor or your grandson or your granddaughter about Jesus Christ? Not, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Not, um, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul will keep. Have you talked to them about their real souls? Have you talked to them about eternal life? Um, children can learn. Children can believe. There's nothing like the belief of a child. Um, 
So have you talked with your grandmother to make sure that her salvation story is not, well, I grew up in the church and I've always been a pretty good person. I think I, well, I got baptized when I was a little girl. Do you know their real salvation story? Did they ever come to a point in their life when they felt like they were a sinner and they needed a savior? Uh, did they ever feel guilty and feel like they deserved hell? Because if you don't feel like you deserve hell, then you don't think you're a sinner. And why would you even need a savior? You might think at one time you got saved, but <clears throat> did, did you really mean it? You know, um, was it real to you? Because when, when people die in the Bible, it says that the, there will be many that, that God will say, um, depart from me, I never knew you. Um, now, this is what I'm going to say about salvation. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. Nothing can pluck you out of Jesus' hand. He tells you in the Word that nobody can take you from my Father in my hand. You don't lose your salvation. When God said that to those people, he said, depart from me, I never knew you. Not, oh, well, you were saved, and then you weren't saved. And then you got saved again, and then I didn't know you for a little while. He says, I never knew you. Salvation is forever. It's eternal. When you believe in Jesus Christ, and you believe, it, he only had to die once for our sin. He only had to shed, shed his blood that, bl blood that one time on the cross. That's all it takes to save you is one time. So um, I just hope and pray that you're saved. I hope and pray that you will get on your knees um, and pray for the lost. Pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our fathers, our mothers, our caregivers, our doctors. And I've done that, but I haven't spent like, probably the amount of time on my needs that God would ha have me, that he would like for me to spend. So just remember that um, when you are get ready to, to do your prayers tonight, we should do everything that we can um, to get close to God right now because this is the best opportunity we've had in a very long time. If we don't take this opportunity, then we're not going to take an opportunity. And one day, we're going to pass away, and we're going to make it to heaven if we're saved. Um, but that judgment that God will judge us on, will we have done all that we could have done? And will God be able to look at us and say, well done? Um, I don't think any of us will ever be perfect. I know I'm not, but I can guarantee you one thing. It's Jesus Christ in me that makes me good. It's Jesus Christ in me and through me that makes me who I am when I love my children and I love my husband unconditionally. And it's Jesus Christ who lives in me when I bring the word to y'all because I'm going to tell you, if it was up to my flesh, I would never turn on this camera and talk about God. Um, just because it's um, a touchy subject. Not everybody wants to listen to it, you know. And I know that I'm going to have comments that aren't nice, that I'm going to have people that don't want to watch me anymore and they sign off and there's so many people out there y'all that start a platform and when they make it big there is no way that they would ever say anything about Jesus Christ because they know that they're going to lose some people well you know what I'm here for Jesus Christ I'm here because he saved me when I was a child, and I'm here because I'm a survivor of cancer, and he wanted me here for a reason. And I praise him for the day that I got up from my chair and decided to start a platform, and I praise him for how good it's done, and I praise him for everything in my life. And I hope that you will too. Because I'm going to tell you, with him in your life, it makes all the difference in the world. It's made all the difference in the world with me and my husband and our relationship. The relationship that we have together. The love that we share for each other. There's no way that we could have that kind of a bond, that kind of love without Jesus Christ. Is there people around you that went to church that get divorced? Of course there are. But that doesn't mean 
they had it together. That doesn't mean they opened up their Bible. That doesn't mean that they prayed sincerely for their partner. That doesn't mean that, um, I mean, none of us are ever perfect. That's just it. If, if I stopped reading this Bible today, and I just decided that I was going to go to heaven, and so I wasn't worried about it. I guarantee you my marriage would fail. I guarantee you eventually my marriage would fail without Christ's love. It would happen, y'all. Um, I hope that y'all have a good day. I will hopefully fight my flesh and come back before the end of the week. Um, I hope that I've been encouraging to you. It is kind of strange during a time like this because you really don't know what to say um, or do. And that's what God gave me today, y'all. So that's what y'all got, okay? Um, and if he gives me something else, I'll come back. But you know what? He can't give me nothing if I don't open up the book. And sometimes I don't. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not perfect. Let's say our prayers and keep everybody in your prayers. Um, I love y'all. I really do pray for y'all. <laughs> I need to get on my knees and pray for y'all more. Um, thanks for listening and loving us. Thanks for praying for my family. Um, I haven't told you what a doctor's appointment was for because it's personal. Um, it's not something I can share, but it was very important. Okay? And no, I don't have cancer or anything crazy like that. But it's something personal. And it was something that was important enough that we picked up and came down here. And that's all that should matter. I've had people send me messages, stay home and do this or do that. And you know what? Unless you're in somebody's shoes, you don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And just believe me that we came down here for a good reason. And... Um, and I'm not going to let the sewer thing bother me because, you know what, it was sewer and they fixed it and didn't even cost us a penny. Um, but our supper was terrible. Oh, my gosh. It was horrible. I hope I make something better to eat tomorrow. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. And we thank you for this beautiful world that we do live in. And we thank you for, um, in a time like this, still being able to go outside in the morning and hearing the birds sing and see the beautiful things that you've made for us to enjoy. May we meditate on your word. May, we, may you help us to relax enough to see those special things around us that matter. Um, thank you for this time, even if it's a terrible time. We, we need to thank you for it because you are showing us something. You're teaching us something. And may we take it to heart and not just assume that... Um, everything's going to be all right and assume that we should go about our life just like it was yesterday or the day before uh, may we get down on our knees and be sincere may we do may may this time actually bring us closer to you may we open up the word of god and not just a bible study or a, a short devotional that just takes five minutes um i just pray that you would help us let you speak to us um in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, I could have prayed for a long time, and I will tonight. I promise I'm going to get on my knees tonight, and I'm going to pray. Uh, and I'm going to do the right thing. And I should be doing that anyway. And you know what? I was just looking at this bed, and it's at, it is actually perfect. Perfect. It's very encouraging, and I, I think... Um, I thank God for what he showed me today. I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed night. And I really don't want to go watch The Walking Dead. So I guess I'll look at my computer or read my Bible for a minute. I love you. Bye. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we're proud to be Christians. And we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ.